Good morning, everyone. Just waiting just a few more seconds just to see if there's anyone else that will be joining us today. See, we have a few more coming in. All righty. Uh, good morning, everyone. We want to thank you all for joining us this morning. Um, this is for our second installment of, of our 2021 Workforce and Retention Webinar Series. We're featuring at least one webinar each month for the remaining of the year that will be dedicated to uh, workforce and retention or just sharing resources with you. Um, today, we're featuring the South Carolina Department of Commerce, our Workforce Development um, Division. My name is Sonia Barkley and I am the moderator and I'm also your small business outreach manager. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and all participants are asked to be muted and your cameras are off. And we want to use the chat feature uh, today to submit questions. If you have any questions, please submit them in the chat and we will um, answer them at the end of the presentation. Also at the end, the slides and the recording will be sent to you via email along with a request to take a brief survey. It is very brief, it's just three questions. Just two questions that we have to click yes or no. And the third question is where we would like your feedback and what topic that is important to you. Just like you just put a little blurb in, in that area. That, this will help us with tailor our future webinars to fit your needs. Right now we have Ms. Tammy Green coming to you and she is our business outreach program manager and she is in, well, she manages the supplier outreach and the small business outreach team here at Commerce. Tammy. Hey, good morning and thank you again. I'm Tammy Green and as Sonia mentioned, I oversee both our small business and supplier outreach programs here at Commerce. The whole goal of this, the business outreach team again is to drop to provide business opportunities um, that create new relationship and strengthening those existing ones. So how do we do that? We do that by offering access to tools, networking opportunities, referrals to agency partners, and by providing direct customized assistance. Um, and as you can see today, we are providing access to tools by uh, providing this webinar for you all um, thank you for joining us this morning as we provide those valuable resources to our South Carolina businesses. And um, I will turn it back over to Sonia. Thanks so much, Tammy. And thanks for that great intro and welcome and explaining why we are here today. And speaking of that, let's see who's here. Um, on this slide right here, you will see a chart that gives you a snapshot of all the industries represented today. These industries are represented by two or more companies that signed up for today's webinar. It also tells the story of how South Carolina businesses share some of the same needs and concerns when it comes to workforce and retention. Now your go-to for your staffing needs is still workforce development, it's still SC Do still SC Works and all the other programs that South Carolina offers that try to help you with your workforce and retention um, needs. This is your support system. Now this webinar series that we have and that we're sharing today, it was designed to introduce other workforce or staffing options you may not have heard about. And it also wanna give us a chance to share additional information that may help you when you're man managing your staff. As Tammy said today, we welcome Elizabeth Kovacs of Commerce and she's gonna share some great information and resources for you to help you with your staffing needs. Here you are, Elizabeth. This is Elizabeth Kovacs, here's her contact information and we're going to ask her to join in right, right away and she can share a little bit of more information about herself right now. Elizabeth, it's all yours. Thank you, Sonia. Happy uh, hump day, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and start in. And um, All right. Sonia, can you see the screen? Yes, we're good. Well, great. Um, again, as Sonia said, my name is Elizabeth Kovacs, and I'm the Deputy Director for Workforce Development um, for the agency. 
And, you know, you all know that South Carolina is a manufacturing state, but also South Carolina is a small business state. We have um, 80 to 90,000 small businesses within the state, and that just depends on uh, how many employees you have. So um, why is workforce development important to our agency as it relates to recruitment or recruiting targeted indus um, industries and talent management services and retention? Um, Oops, sorry. Let's go to the next slide. All right. Um, let's talk a little bit about the vision and mission of our agency, specifically the mission. As you'll see on the screen, our mission is working together to create opportunities for South Carolinians by promoting job creation, economic growth, and improved living standards for South Carolina. Since our state is the state's business agency, you know, we view workforce as an opportunity and we work to ensure that there is a ready and skilled pipeline for our existing and future industries, that there is connectivity between industry and education, and that we under and that, that we understand the skills and the occupations needed now and in the future so we can better communicate and connect the workforce. So our goal basically is to ensure that South Carolina has the ability to prepare a talent pool to meet the current and future needs of new and existing industries. And, and so that's where you all come in too, is being able to tell us what your workforce needs are in the future. So Sonia just mentioned this in her opening remarks is I, I kind of want to start out of, you know, South Carolina, we have a workforce ecosystem, if you will. And this is an idea of that, it, uh, of that workforce ecosystem. And, and instead of kind of really talking about specifically recruitment and retention, I'm going to kind of talk about uh, the plethora of it. Um, as you can see, um, I kind of changed some words in here that, you know, we're involved in advocacy, engagement, recruitment, and job placement, as well as education, training, and labor market data. Labor market data. So there are a variety of partners, and we work together collaboratively to meet the needs of, of our businesses, uh, small, medium, and large, uh, new and existing, if you will. I know that some of you put some questions in, the, um, in your registration, so we're gonna try to hit on some of those as, as we're walking through. Um, you know, frankly, businesses have some similar workforce opportunities and challenges, but also very different depending on the size of the business. The pandemic certainly has changed a number of things and continues to be ever changing. So that kind of is the perfect term when we talk about workforce or rather talent is it's ever changing in the way we prepare and train the workforce and also the way technology is changing the types of jobs. So let's just go into a little bit more detail about the variety of partners and, and, and how we all play. Um, commerce is only a, a small fish in a big pond. Um, Sonia mentioned the Department of Employment and Workforce, our sister agency. Uh, you know, they do a lot of job recruitment and job postings and screenings, uh, as well as job placement and for job seekers and employers. So um, they have done a yeoman's job in the last year uh, on the unemployment side, and, and, and they're working very, very, very hard to get these folks reemployed. So um, I, I think that it is. It is, a, it is a buyer's market, right, from an employee standpoint because of the change that the pandemic has brought. From a commerce perspective, we're gonna talk a little bit about our regional workforce advisors, as well as our talent management and our coordinating council for workforce development. We're also gonna go into some detail about the South Carolina Future Makers and our Tallow Initiative, uh, which is a public-private partnership um, that connects our, our citizens in South Carolina with uh, education opportunities as well as employers. And then we'll talk about um, kind of targeted populations, right? So um, our Department of Veterans Affairs is a newly created cabinet agency and how do we recruit those transitioning military and their spouses in South Carolina. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail, but uh, 
would be remiss if it did not include that our, our South Carolina Chamber of Commerce, as well as our, our partnership with South Carolina Council on a Competitiveness and SC Bio are also players in the workforce realm. And we lean heavily on each other in order to meet the needs of our businesses, if you will. So kind of to go into a little bit more detail of, of the overview that I just got gave to you is, um, as you can see on your slide, in partnership with DO, um, SC Works maintains centers located in each of the regions across the state to support employers and job seekers. Um, on the job seeker side, of course, they, um, they, they work on, with career counseling and job referrals. They have some training services and resume writing assistance. Um, on the employer side of the house, of course, you see training opportunities, uh, job openings, recruiting and screening candidates, as well as labor market information. Um, we talked about kind of um, some of those special populations. Um, SC Works has a, a variety of partners in the system that bring to the table a variety of different constituents. Um, so, Let's take, for example, 12% of South, Carolina po South Carolina's population has a disability, and this population, like others, takes pride in their work and wants to work. So the state's vocational rehabilitation works with their clients to make sure that they get them into positions um, across the board, whether it be small business, medium-sized business, or larger businesses. And I, I'll give you kind of an example of, of that I like to, to use is the Walgreens Distribution Center. And I know that's a, a larger facility and this is more of a, a localized small business uh, audience today, sorry, just flipped out for a minute. Um, you know, but, but Walgreens, when, when, they, when they located in South Carolina and when they were looking to locate, they wanted to use this facility to um, test drive, if you will, a pilot program working with people with disabilities. And um, I, I have to give them kudos that uh, the community, Anderson County, and um, the local vocal, vocational rehabilitation, DDSN, um, and the community came together to really figure out how, how to do this. And uh, to this day, 45% of the workforce within the Walgreens distribution uh, facility are folks with a disability. So moving on into the Department of Commerce, we have a set of folks, our regional workforce advisors, who are our translators between the business and education for talent development. And as you can see on the map, we have our 12 local workforce advisors are aligned with the 12 local workforce development board areas in the state. Um, if you think back to the previous slide where I talked about do, um, one of those partners is the 12 local workforce areas. So by law, our folks are aligned with those. Um, they help create a workforce of the future by bridging the gaps at the local level between those who educate students as well as those businesses within the community. They also are, are a connector with, between students and future career opportunities and higher education to develop that workforce. You know, I think when we talk about workforce, it's all about understanding what is uh, in, in our makeup, right? So um, when we look at uh, the big picture, this is an example of our regional workforce snapshot. This is of the Trident area. So knowing what is available within your community um, is essential to any business um, and, and knowing kind of some of the information uh, including, you know, how many people are in the workforce. This is really just an example of, um, again, this is last month, March 2021, we know that, but total employment within the Berkeley, Charleston, Dorchester County is over $300,000. So how do you tap into that? Um, this is also a way where we can take a, a variety of different data sets and put them into a one pager front and back. Um, you can see what kinds of colleges are in your areas and happy to provide that, Sonia, for you to send out to the group. I just wanted to have some examples in here. Um, 
And, and when you look at the top industries, uh, you can see at the bottom in the Trident region, healthcare and social assistance is, is you know, the largest um, industry within that. Um, and then you have that breakdown. So knowing what is in your community and what's available and the resources are essential for you to have the information that you're looking for. We've just released a business workforce resource guide. And again, this is just a snapshot and this is a lot of information on your screen. So um, this is for the Catawba region, if you will. So uh, again, when you think back to the ecosystem and you think of the pipeline, right? Um, you, you're, you might need employees right now, but you also want to think about, um, you know, what are your needs in the future and how are, how are the different um, types of, of workforce entities and education? How can you tap into those resources? So you see here, we have information about our career and technical education centers. Those are our high school centers that work um, to prepare our students in, 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 in careers. Um, College and Career Services, uh, again, you can see the, the Winthrop, York Tech, Clinton College, um, and again, the agencies and organizations. This is a one pager, and again, if you're interested in having this for your area, I'll be happy to provide that to Sonia and she can get that out to the group, if you will. So moving on, I mentioned South Carolina Future Makers, a public-private partnership which fully engages South Carolina's manufacturing and technology communities, um, not only at the middle school and high school level, but also at the technical college level and four-year level as well. This is specifically relates to manufacturing, but utilizing the, the platform Tello, um, which is an online connection platform like Facebook and LinkedIn, used for future makers, but we, we work with Tello for a variety of others. So um, there are opportunities for you to, to put some information about your business or searching for students and we can help you with that. Um, Tello is a, a South Carolina company. And so we, we're excited to be able to work with South Carolina companies. And I know, you know, that's one of the things that, uh, we talk about with our small business and our source SC with Tammy is how do we utilize um, our existing industries as, as leverage to help other, uh, other businesses in South Carolina as well as connect them together. So happy to, to work with Tallo on that. Um, our, our regional workforce advisors each had uh, 12 SC days with Tallo and, and that brought information into the classroom this past year during the pandemic um, for students and teachers to learn about different occupations. Uh, and I'm gonna talk a lot at the end about awareness as we move into our new normal post pandemic um, and, and continuing through the pandemic, you know, we want to make sure that we provide our citizens with the right information about the types of, types of businesses and the types of jobs that we have in South Carolina. I briefly mentioned the Coordinating Council for South Carolina uh, for Workforce Development, which is housed within the Department of Commerce as the state's business agency. And this is a way to bring in that ecosystem, if you will, that we talked about on the front end. There are a lot of players, um, you know, economic development, workforce development, and education is a three-legged stool. And you have to bring together all the partners so that we have a seamless um, workforce resources for not only our citizens, but for you, our business community, as well as to assist in um, our economic developers as they recruit our industry. So our coordinating council is made up of uh, technical colleges, the state Department of Education, uh, Employment and Workforce, the Department of Education, um, as well as those other partners that we talked about, um, Council on Competitiveness, SC Bio. And so we bring these folks together to really identify and prioritize how we um, can, as a state, really move the needle as it relates to workforce development. I mentioned the Department of Veterans Affairs uh, earlier in my comments, and this is a newly created cabinet agency. Um, it was stood up right before the pandemic shut things down. 
Um, but just like our agency is the is in the business of recruiting and expanding companies in South Carolina, now we have a dedicated agency uh, that is really taking on that statewide effort in recruiting transitioning military um, and their spouses to stay in South Carolina. South Carolina has eight installations across our state, and we have um, roughly three to 4,000 folks that are coming out of our service installations um, annually, and we want to keep them here. Uh, you know, I like to give the example that a, a lot of folks come out more out of the Beaufort area because of the facilities that we have down there. Um, and, and they need to be aware of the opportunities, maybe not right there where they live, um, but in the upstate or in the PD region um, and really recruiting them to stay in South Carolina is, is one of the efforts that is being undertaken by the new Department of Veterans Affairs. And we, along with many of the other workforce ecosystem players, meet with them on an, um, I'm sorry, on a monthly basis in order to really focus on, on recruiting that talent and having them stay in South Carolina. So now I'm gonna kind of transition on to the education, training and the labor market data piece of this. Um, of course, as you see on your screen, there are a variety of resources here and we're gonna kind of delve right into each one of those um, as we did previously. If you're unaware, the South Carolina Technical College System does provide uh, learning opportunities to promote economic and human resource development in the state. So we have 16 technical colleges across the state. And um, if you don't know who that technical college is within your footprint, please feel free to put that in the chat box and we will be help, able to help assist you with connecting with them. Um, getting involved with the education uh, whether it be at the high school level or post-secondary uh, is essential because um, you can also, you can recruit students to do work-based learning, whether they're at the K-12 or in the technical college system, um, also internships, if you will. Uh, so we lean very heavily on our technical college system and they play a key role in educating and training our workforce for the in-demand high school jobs of today and tomorrow. Underneath the technical college's umbrella is also Apprenticeship Carolina, and they work to increase the awareness and use of registered apprenticeships. Um, Apprenticeship Carolina is, is known nationally. We are, we are best practice on, on the national and international level. And this is not only for um, regular citizens, we have youth apprenticeship programs as well. Uh, and, and I, need to give a big shout out to the folks, you know, we have a lot of resources that um, are currently available within the apprenticeship footprint now that um, thanks to COVID, there were some federal dollars that were dedicated specifically to that and South Carolina has benefited um, at the tune of uh, millions and millions of dollars of, of funding to assist with standing up apprenticeship programs. We have apprenticeship um, apprenticeship folks across the state. So happy to also connect you with those folks. So moving kind of into a, a service related on the job training assistance is available through um, our SC Works partners. So not only through the local workforce development areas, uh, there's also OJT assistance through Voc Rehab. Um, and, and this allows a to offset the cost of onboarding a new employee, if you will, um, as you ramp up. Uh, some, some of you know that the, the highest cost is bringing people on board and, and, and when those folks cycle out after six weeks, maybe this helps reduce that, um, that cost on the front end. Incumbent worker training through the Department of Employment and Workforce provides funding from the Federal Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act um, for upskilling and retraining of your current workforce. Um, as you can see on the screen, training may be used for expansion, new technology, retooling, um, and it's provided through your local workforce board and the SC Work Centers. And we're happy to also provide that information. And I know Sonia 
Uh, you said you're going to have um, some of these series, and I know that you have Voc Rehab coming up in a couple of months, and also SC Do before the end of the year. So you'll learn some really in-depth information from from those folks in the future. The South Carolina Manufacturing Extension Partnership is also a partner with the Department of Commerce, and they provide hands-on um, hands-on assistance by uh, and that analyzing your, your current workforce and what you need. And um, they can look at your business and see if, if, if there are ways to provide some, some lean information. So um, as you can see, they, they support small and medium-sized businesses with um, continuous improvement like Lean Six Sigma workforce development. And they do have the no-cost competitiveness review that um, if you haven't taken advantage of, it's, it's, it's just a, a tool to be used um, to make sure that your business is uh, working uh, as profitably and lean as possible. Sonia, I'm going to stop there and just before I kind of go into the future of work and and how we can engage our citizens, are there any questions that um, have come up and that I can stop and answer? Um, Elizabeth, no, we don't have any questions yet. You're doing an awesome job, of course. And I know that you had incorporated a lot of the questions and concerns that were listed on the registration form as well. So it looks like you have everything covered. So far, no questions. Great. So I, I'm going to kind of transition, if you will. And, and one of the things that I think you will see a focus on as we come out of the pandemic is um, really how do we engage our citizens, our students, um, our college students who are coming here, how do we make folks aware of the variety of businesses? Uh, again, I said 80 to 90,000 small businesses. Um, and then if you look at our manufacturing sector, if you look at our healthcare sector, um, we need to get the word out about the types of businesses that we have. Um, I think it's a great time for change. I think it's an opportunity. Uh, I like to use this analogy that, you know, the horse-drawn carriage represented the premium means for travel for centuries until the automobile was created and mass produced. Uh, the automobile was one of the foundations of the 20th century development, impacting how cities grew, how families traveled, and ultimately where and how people worked. The automotive manufacturing industry helped to create the American middle class creating trends, ten, tens of thousands of good paying jobs. And then if you look back at the first iPhone was released in 2007, and that was really, that was 14 years ago and look where we've come. So technology is going to play a part in, in our workforce and transitioning into that workforce. Um, and as we, as we know from this past year, the rate of this, the, this change is, uh, it has, increased threefold, if you will, and will continue on a regular basis. So how do we, sorry about that. So how do we transition and engage folks across the state? Um, I'm gonna stop talking for a minute and um, talk about one of the things that we are working on across the state, our teachers in the workplace video. So how do, again, when we talk about educating our educators in, in the types of occupations and the types of jobs we have for in South Carolina, making them aware of what is in their backyard and the types of small businesses within their backyard. So I'm gonna share this three minute video and I hope that in our practice session earlier, um, this will come through. Sonia, let me know if you have, um, if you can't hear. Good. 
decided to sign up for Teachers in the Workplace because I'm always looking for opportunities to learn more about what businesses in our communities need. Doing any kind of things where you can learn from a different industry is really huge. I think when you get outside of the box that you're in and see how, how uh, other people do things, it's a really great opportunity to see, hey gosh, I didn't think about this particular thing or skill, um, but it really could apply to what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. When you can expand your horizons like that, that's always a good thing. I think it's important for students to understand how corporate America works and what better way for that to happen than for me to actually visit the company and bring it back out to them. I signed up for Teachers in the Workplace to do some professional development. Um, I thought it would be really fun to be paired up with an employer to see what the careers and jobs are really like. It's not enough just to talk about subjects in class. We've got to show students a chance for them to dream about being a microbiologist or a chemist or an engineer. I think any of our good leaders out here would probably harp on the importance of education. It's extremely important. Learning never stops. It's a continuous process. It's also important for me as a career specialist to build that relationships with the different companies so that when the opportunity does arise that I have a student that would like to job shadow, then I have those contacts. Working with the teachers and allowing them to come out here and see how we actually operate, I think it's very helpful for them to be able to communicate to the students, you know, what career offerings there are. It just helps me better understand whenever I'm trying to talk to students about being a pipe fitter or about being, you know, going into HVC or plumbing. It kind of helps me understand what they're actually going to be doing on the job site. I think this is a great idea. I think this is something that should be part of the school system. I will assure you that I did not sit behind a desk or do any kind of file or anything like that. They actually took me out and immersed me into the work place and their job sites. I have been further inspired. I thought it was a good idea. I know it's a great idea. And that is for me to host teachers and students at every chance I get. All right, I hope you enjoyed that little video and a break and uh, hearing me talk. To, you know, another thing, another way to, to get information out is, um, again, this is all about awareness and information, sharing about the types of jobs in South Carolina, the types of businesses to get people um, engaged with work, if you will. Uh, so one of the, another thing that we've created last year, or that, I'm sorry, this year that's come out, um, is a podcast series. And so we will be um, relaunching this when school starts and um, engaging our parents and, and other city citizens as well. And, and we will be doing this in a variety of different um, occupations. Um, so if, if you think that you have a business that you'd be interested in, please let us know. But I'm going to, again, stop talking and, and just play a little teaser here, if you will. Why are cosmetic doctors turning against microblading? Sorry. Of course, we have the ad. So give me just one second. Here's a woman with eyebrows. and welcome to Define the Journey podcast. This podcast features real people in South Carolina's in-demand job opportunities like cybersecurity, healthcare, logistics, and advanced manufacturing, just to name a few. These 20-minute conversations feature industry leaders in the dynamic modern workplace. Get answers on what kind of education and financial resources are out there for students. Watch and listen to Define the Journey for careers that may be just right for you. 
For more information, follow SC Commerce on social media or email workforce at sccommerce.com for links to each episode. Sorry about that. Hang on just one second. And a warning. This video you're about to see is graphic and disturbing. I saw his hand with a box counter. I shouted for help. Sonia, my apologies. I uh, I had had the video just kept going. So sorry for that pause. No and problem. Having a little musical interlude. That's fine. Yes, we did. <laughs> so let's move on to the next slide. Sorry about that. And I can't tell what you can see on my screen, but I'm gonna have to go back through. Okay, so uh, again, a variety of different awareness campaigns and, and my apologies for that little hiccup. Um, one of the things that uh, another define your journey, if you will, is um, we will be working on a, a project in the next um, 12 to 18 months of of again, going across South Carolina, talking about the different jobs. Um, companies will also have an opportunity to highlight themselves on a crowdsourcing platform. So as soon as we have that information out, um, we'd be happy to share it with the audience. Um, we're working to, to begin this project in the next two to three months as we wrap up. Um, Road Trip Nation is uh, a California-based company, and uh, we're working with them, and um, there will be commercials and, and information about videos and, and whatnot, occupations, businesses in South Carolina, uh, and we'll, we'll be working with ETV, so we'll have videos across the state, and, and, and again, we want to engage all of our business on the crowdsourcing platform so that you can tell your story about how you opened your business or um, what made you interested in um, going into the type of businesses that you're in? So um, telling people, telling real stories about yourselves and ourselves. Um, we've not done a really good, we've not really done a good job in South Carolina about telling the good stories. So now it's time to tell the good stories that we have to tell. Um, and again, engage our citizens in the types of, of interesting jobs and occupations that we have. And now I'm going to just kind of wrap up with, you know, another resource um, that is uh, across the state is our Be Pro, Be Proud, South Carolina. Um, and if you haven't had a chance to see it, it is uh, going around to communities uh, across the state. And it is a three-part program. Uh, I'll show you. It is a, a tractor trailer that has interactive uh, information within it. And um, it, it, again, is another way, you know, we all learn differently, right? So visual, hearing, hands-on approach. Um, so the Be Proud, Be Pro movement is a year in, and we are excited um, of the number of people it's touched, right? So um, there have been 465 stops in eight, 285 cities and 15,565 uh, folks have have done that, not only from a high school and college level, um, but this goes around to different associations and different conferences. So we're excited to, to work with the Department of Employment and Workforce on that and, and really highlighting that in, in, in communities across South Carolina. So with that, I, um, again, unless there are any questions, that kind of wraps up my my. Uh, my comments and, and excited to be a part of this, but also really excited and passionate about really helping create the workforce of the future and meeting the needs of South Carolina businesses. So Sonia, thank you for the opportunity. 
Um, and I will turn it back over to you. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. You shared a lot of great information. As you can see, Elizabeth's contact information is right there for you. If you have some questions um, later on, Right now, Elizabeth, we have no questions in the chat box. And that just means you covered everything that needed to be covered. And I just want to uh, share my screen um, once again. Hold on one second. And let's see. I would like to show you guys what we're doing for the next go round. So for next month, um, next uh, on Wednesday, August 4th from 11 to 12, we'll have some more resources to share with you. Um, they'll be coming from Goodwill Industries of the upstate Midland, South Carolina area, where we will feature Ms. Rachel Williams Putman. She's the VP of Mission and People, and also Tracy Bledsoe, who's the Job Connection Missions Manager. There's a lot of good information and a good, good programs at Goodwill, and I think you will find that it's a little more than what you were expecting, honestly, from Goodwill. So we're anxious um, for that upcoming webinar. For everyone that has registered, for everyone who has joined us today, you will receive a copy of, of the actual um, webinar session today, along with any handouts that Elizabeth will have. And you will also get an invitation to the next one as well, when we have the next uh, session uh, for featuring Goodwill. So just wanted to let you know that. Also, just wanted to introduce um, myself. Here's a picture of me. I'm the Small Business Outreach Manager, again, Sonia Barkley, and we are the business outreach team, along with Mr. Dayton Ward. So Dayton and I, we work closely together. We are part of Tammy Green's team, and, and this is what we do. We're in touch with small businesses, along with manufacturers, and we offer a lot of service. You will see the logos that are here for Source SC and Size Up SC. And for anyone who is interested in learning more about Size Up SC, then I am the person to contact. It is a great business intelligence tool that'll help you with your marketing, finding your customers, finding suppliers in your area. And it's very user friendly and I can help you walk through that. And I'll also include that link and some more information for Size Up SC uh, once we send everything out to you. Just would like to take a moment to introduce Mr. Dayton Ward, who is our Supplier Outreach Program Manager. Just like for him to introduce himself and also share some information that may be helpful to you as well. Good morning. My name is Dayton Ward and I serve as the Supplier Outreach Manager for the South Carolina Department of Commerce. Um, real quick, I'm going to pull up um, my contact information. Uh, as well as a link that I'm going to talk to you all a little bit about. But um, in the spirit of supporting you, our valued partners, uh, I'd like to share some additional resources and tools we offer that, that may be of assistance to you and your business. One resource of particular focus is Source SC, Commerce's very own industry directory. Um, as you will see at the bottom, of my photo, uh, there's a link, www.sourcesc.com. Um, highly encourage y'all to visit that at the end of this webinar. Um, but Source SC is a statewide material and service locator database that is leveraged to match specific capabilities of companies and their supply chain requirements. Businesses can work one-on-one -on -one with a commerce team member for specific sourcing requests or utilize the database to find local suppliers as well as be listed a local supplier to grow your business. Um, some benefits of being a member of Source SC. Uh, once your company is registered, you will be notified of B2B networking and outreach events throughout the state. You'll be included in sourcing requests when a company contacts Commerce to be connected with local suppliers. Um, additionally, you'll be listed in the Source SC directory found on our website. Uh, for the sake of confidentiality, direct contact information for company representatives is not shared on the site. And lastly, the Source SC industry directory is available at no charge. The only requirement is that participating companies must have a physical presence in South Carolina. So again, to learn more about the platform and to get registered, please visit www.sourcesc.com. 
sourcesc.com. Uh, some additional resources that uh, supplier outreach or rather services that supplier outreach offers include initial supplier support. In other words, helping to identify South Carolina suppliers for every stage of the process. That includes construction, indirect, and direct. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, you've received notification of B2B and outreach events. Well, we also put those on. So the supplier outreach team will invite contractors, subcontractors, and suppliers to learn more about a new announcement or expansion project, as well as how to get involved with various companies. B2B matchmaker events, that's a specialized platform that offers an opportunity for suppliers to meet one-on-one -on -one with companies to help grow their business, gain exposure, and nurture business relationships and or partnerships. And lastly, we fulfill sourcing requests. So that's fielding direct inquiries from existing South Carolina companies who are in need of specific goods, services, or recycling needs provided by suppliers within the state. Uh, please do not hesitate to give me a call at the number provided, send me an email, um, be happy to assist or answer any questions that you may have. Um, additionally, if there are any questions at this time, Sonia, I'd be happy to field those. All right, I see a few questions or a couple of questions in the chat box right now, but they are directed more um, for Elizabeth. But just wanted to let everyone know that you will receive um, some additional source SC information from um, Dayton. If we have any other attachments or, or flyers or anything that we can share with you regarding the program, we certainly want to do that to make sure that you have a, a reference to all the information that was uh, shared today. Just like to transition a little bit here and um, bring Elizabeth back in. We had a question from Corey and Corey wanted to know is how can we get the Be Pro, Be Proud truck to come to a job fair? We'll be happy to, to get your information and um, reach out to our partners at DO. Uh, there is a website, Be Pro, Be Proud South Carolina and there is a calendar on there. Um, I, I honestly tell you, it's, uh, I think it's already full for the rest of the year. Um, however, if you go to that Be Pro, Be Proud SC, I'm not sure of the, the back handle of that, whether it's .org or .com, but if you do a search on Be Pro, Be Proud South Carolina, then um, you can request that and they have a calendar. Um, you know, if it's going to be somewhere in near your area there, they like to try to um, schedule things in addition to that. So check out their calendar. Good question. Um, we do have another. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. And thank you for the question as well. Um, we do have another one from Alex. And Alex wants to know if you have any resources specifically tailored to the Hispanic to Hispanic individuals. That's a great question, and thank you for asking that. Just is we do have um, we we market to <clears throat> through social media, <clears throat> excuse me, about opportunities and trying to engage um, the Hispanic community. Um, so if there is something specific that you're interested in or want to learn more about, we're happy to to kind of talk through with you uh, uh, regarding that as well. And Alex. Um, I will also share with you a connection with the South Carolina um, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, who has many different programs. You may see their, some of their programs featured on LinkedIn. For everyone on here, you can certainly connect the South Carolina Department of Commerce on, on LinkedIn as well, and you can see the upcoming events. So I know for, for me in particular, I do try to advertise both English and Spanish programs that may be coming through. You, another connection also would be the South Carolina Commission for Minority Affairs, who has a Hispanic division as well. So I'll make sure I'll send those um, links and some additional information with everything else that we send out. So Alex, just look out for that. And we will certainly include that with all of the other um, information that we're sharing today. Uh, let's see, do I know I saw something else. Yeah, I saw oh. a couple others. Mm -hmm. So Sonia asked if um, the teachers in the workplace program different from the externship program um, that one of our RWAs has in, in the York, uh, Catawba region, York, 
Chester and um, Lancaster region. Um, so, so very similar, of course, Sonia, you're very familiar with that. And um, trying to get videos across the state uh, within those local areas is, 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 we're working those one at a time. So we've finished our second, our second video series and uh, we'll be doing that across the state. I think there was another question from Mike about um, targeting working work, helping identify part-time or temporary workers. Uh, absolutely, um, there are companies that are hiring, like I said earlier, high school students or uh, college students um, work very closely with our folks at Do. Um, they are doing a yeoman's job at um, sending out targeted messages to qualified candidates. Uh, for part-time, for full-time, for all kinds of work. So happy to make those connections as well. S. Young had another question. Um, is the teachers in the workplace program different from the teacher externship programs that Lisa Robbins has run in previous years? I'm not familiar with that program or Lisa Robbins, but um, Elizabeth, do you have any information about that? Yeah, Sonia, thanks. Um, it, it is is very similar. It's just called something different. Um, and, and I was referring to that a little earlier about um, doing these videos across the state. Mm, scrolling through just to see if there's anything else. And it looks like um, that's it for the questions for now. And just want to share our information up there again. And I'm just waiting for the system to catch up. But I just want to thank everyone for, for joining us today. And I um, just want you to look forward to the next webinar. Don't forget. And we'll send you that information as well. And so you can sign up for that if you like. And you'll also receive the recording along with all the questions that we have um, today and the answers. So look for that in your mailbox soon. And this concludes our webinar for today. You have a few minutes to yourselves right now to get a jump start on your lunch. And um, we just thank you. We wish you well and have a great week. Thank you all. <laughs>